So maybe we can um, just give a little attention to our, our body, um, find a comfortable posture to sit in. If you're not used to sitting on the ground, I really recommend you sit on a chair. The focus of meditation is, is knowing the heart and uh, so it's best to not distract our minds too much from being able to know the heart by being uh, a little aggressive with our bodies. So if you can make sure that you're sitting comfortably and it's very helpful to just imagine that the spine is like a stack of co coins and we're just stacking them up a little bit and we bring a little bit of activity into that spine by just imagining there's a hook on the top of our head and it's slightly just ever so gently uh, being pulled upwards towards the ceiling so this brings a little activity into our spine so that our sitting is is alert and is engaged rather than say slumped and collapsed so we're giving our body permission to relax so this isn't in a self-conscious way that we're sitting or in a a sort of hypervigilant way but instead we're just putting it aside as best we can through care kindness and consideration for our own body and so we take a note of any uh, discomfort that we may have in the body any uh, feelings so I just check in on how am I feeling and how can I make this feelings of uh, comfort or discomfort uh, an object of care and of kind consideration by myself towards myself an act of self-care so I put my hands in a nice comfortable position for me uh, so that I, I know my hands are comfortable because they're not fidgeting over time but I also allow myself time to just settle down into the posture uh, I, I adjust my posture in the first few minutes of any meditation of any sitting so that as I start to settle into how I feel today and I adjust my position accordingly so that I'm not being overbearing or controlling or manipulative with my own body I'm really really just trying to check in with what do I need what would be kind what would be considerate towards myself I find it helpful to take a deep in breath and releasing it all the way out just giving attention now to fill the bottom of the belly and filling it all the way up through the chest and releasing it all the way out nice and slowly and then we're just going to do one more third where we're going to aim to really fill the top of the chest but starting from the bottom of the belly middle and really lifting up the shoulders and releasing all the way out really giving ourselves permission to wholeheartedly relax and I'd just like you to if you want maybe just give your attention for the next four minutes I'm going to just show a short video clip and we're going to help use this to help us take make the theme of our meditation today You and I met at Stillwater Prison 
I wanted to know if you were in the same mindset of what I remember from court, where I wanted to go over and hurt you, but you were not that 16-year-old. You were a grown man. I shared with you about my son. And he became human to me. You know, when I met you, it was like, okay, this guy is real. And then when it was time to go, you broke down and started shedding tears. And the initial thing to do was just try to hold you up as best I can. Just hug you like I would my own mother, you know. After you left the room, I began to say, I just hugged the man that murdered my son. And I instantly knew that all that anger and animosity, all the stuff I had in my heart for 12 years for you, I knew it was over, that I had totally forgiven you. As far as receiving forgiveness from you, sometimes I still don't know how to take it because I haven't totally forgiven myself yet. It's something that I'm learning from you. I won't say that I have learned yet because it's still a process that I'm going through. I treat you as I would treat my son. And our relationship is beyond belief. We live next door to one another. Yeah, so you can see what I'm doing. You know, firsthand. Mm -hmm. We actually bump into each other all the time, leaving in and out of the house. And you know, our conversations, they come from, boy, how come you ain't called over here to check on me in a couple of days? <laughs> you ain't even asked me if I need my garbage to go out. Uh -huh. I find those things funny <laughs> because it's a relationship with a mother for real. Well, my natural son is no longer here. I didn't see him graduate. You know, you're going to college. I'll have the opportunity to see you graduate. I didn't see him get married. Hopefully one day I'll be able to experience that with you. And just to hear you say those things and to be in my life in the manner in which you are is my motivation. It motivates me to make sure that I stay on the right path. You still believe in me. And the fact that you can do it despite how much pain I cause you, it's amazing. I know it's not an easy thing, you know, to be able to share our story together. So I admire that you can do this. I love you, lady. I love you too, son. Checking in with great kindness and care towards my head, my shoulders, my chest, <coughs> pelvis, legs, feet. Just checking in all the contact points where I touch the floor or the chair where my hands are touching each other. And just taking that inspiration of, of giving myself permission to wholeheartedly aspire to release any any animosity I may have towards myself, any to wholeheartedly forgive myself for any anger or ill will that I may be holding towards myself. Taking that inspiration from from Mary, 
that this is something that I can do for myself, that I can forgive myself. So I wholeheartedly forgive. I'm going to just scan down through my body parts, starting from the head, moving towards the feet. So I wholeheartedly forgive the top of my own head. Just directing my attention in that location, in that direction. I don't really need to visualize it or see it. If, if that's how I see it, then that's how I see it. If I don't, it doesn't matter. But I know where I'm talking about. That's enough knowledge. I wholeheartedly forgive the back of my head. The back side of my head, I wholeheartedly forgive. I wholeheartedly give myself permission to let go of any anger or animosity I have towards the right side of my head. I forgive the left side of my head with all of my heart. I give myself permission to let go of any anger or animosity I may have towards the, my forehead, the front side of my head. And I give myself permission to let go of any anger and anim animosity I may have towards my <coughs> eyes. I wholeheartedly forgive my nose. I let go of any anger and animosity I may have towards my mouth. I give myself permission to let go of these angry words, unhappy faces, downcast mouth, all these feelings that sometimes I have in my mouth. I give myself permission with a smile to let go to forgive myself for being the human that I am. I give myself permission to wholeheartedly forgive myself in my neck area. And just as if I was shopping, I let go and let go of these tension, the weight of any shopping bags. I just release that weight, drop them on the ground, letting go of any tension from my shoulders. With great forgiveness for the burdens that I've sometimes carried on my shoulders, letting go giving myself the permission to let go of these burdens. And I let go of any tension that I may be holding in my arms, giving myself permission and maybe mentally I can put my hands together in Anjali and as a great act of respect and forgiveness towards myself and towards my hands. I forgive myself, I forgive my hands, my fingers, palms. I let go of any animosity or anger. I give myself full permission to forgive myself in my chest area, in the lungs and in the heart knowing full well that I can hold tension in this area, holding, withholding my breath, not breathing wholeheartedly into, into this body. But now I give myself full permission to forgive myself in this area of the lungs and the heart.
Again, I forgive myself in my stomach and intestinal areas. Wholeheartedly forgiving myself, giving myself permission to let go of any tension, any holding, any any emotional pain that I may be holding in this area, I give myself full permission, full forgiveness. I give myself the permission to forgive myself. I wholeheartedly forgive myself in this area of the stomach and intestines. Again, coming to the back area, upper back, middle back, lower back, I wholeheartedly forgive my back, my spine, the radiating ribs, the spinal column. I give myself wholehearted permission to forgive myself in this part of the body, knowing full well that I can hold tension and stress in these areas. But I give myself permission to make peace with this part of my body, opening my heart with all of my heart to the burdens and strains that I've placed on my back and giving myself wholehearted permission to, to renew and I give myself wholehearted permission to forgive myself in my hips and pelvis. I give myself great permission to forgive myself in my thighs. With all of my heart, I forgive my thighs. And on bended knee, I can forgive myself for any of the strain or suffering that I may bear in my knees. With great forgiveness, I forgive myself on bended knees. My shin and calf, I forgive my shin and calf. letting go of any shame that I may be holding in my shin and calf, any tension. And I wholeheartedly forgive myself, give myself permission to forgive and let go any tension, any suffering that I may be holding in my ankles, heel, foot and toes. And now I put all of these different body parts together, the feet, the legs, the torso, the arms, the neck and the head. Maybe just like you saw the, the two people embracing each other or acting in some ways as a forgiveness, I forgive myself wholeheartedly. So maybe I can just imagine that I'm showing some sign of respect towards myself, embracing myself with great hope and hearted forgiveness. To err is human and to forgive is divine, seeing the divine nature of this act of forgiveness towards myself. Where I make a great effort to forgive all of this, this ragdoll body of mine and this aggregate of different mind states that I call myself. Just forgiving myself as a fragile, suffering human. And just as my own nature is one of imperfection, something that is subject to change, something is, that is out of control, something that is prone to suffering, 
so too do I see this nature in everybody else in this room and I extend outwards and unbounded a sense of great forgiveness towards everybody in the room so just as a ripple in a pond would radiate out wider or just as the sun is generously shining its light in all directions I share this great act of forgiveness towards everybody in this room I apologize with all of my heart and I ask for great forgiveness from everybody in this room and now I'm just going to radiate it out further to everybody in Melbourne may I extend a sense of forgiveness towards all beings in all directions here in Melbourne all around and may I extend mentally I can just extend arms and angeli, hands and angeli a sense of deep forgiveness towards all beings here in Australia and radiating out wider to all beings in Tasmania New Zealand, Indonesia, all around us all around this this beautiful red island that we're living on radiating out further to our neighbors with great forgiveness And now we're just going to move up through Southeast Asia, moving through Malaysia, Thailand, Burma, Laos, Cambodia, Philippines, this whole region with great forgiveness towards all beings. And moving eastward towards India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, this whole region with great forgiveness towards South Asia and moving with great forgiveness through the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Yemen, this whole region And moving with great forgiveness through Africa, Egypt to Morocco and all the way to South Africa with great forgiveness for the whole continent of Africa. And now moving through Europe, through Greece, all the way up to Scandinavia, all the way down to Spain and Portugal from Ireland across to Russia, this whole continent of Europe with great forgiveness and moving through across the Atlantic through the uh, Americas, North America, Central America, South America with great forgiveness for this whole region and moving across now the Pacific to the far east of China Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Mongolia, Tibet this whole region of the Far East with great forgiveness towards all beings in the Far East and now just we step back from this whole planet Earth maybe you can just embrace this globe in your arms with great forgiveness even as a mother would forgive her child, her only child, so too with a boundless heart do I embrace and forgive this whole planet Earth. And maybe as I release myself from this embrace of forgiveness, Maybe I can just 
go over and rest where the sun is, just like as, as if it was a beautiful sofa, a golden lounge, or a swimming pool, something that I can just really float on and rest in this state of forgiveness for all beings in all directions and radiate in all directions just as the sun is kind and generous in all directions giving its light this light of forgiveness for all beings in all directions north, south, east, west, above and below in every quarter ex radiating a sense of great forgiveness for all beings in all directions So I just breathe into this state of forgiveness with great compassionate feeling for myself and for all beings in all directions with great forgiveness, with great kindness, with great care. giving myself permission to be human and to forgive myself for any anger, any craving and wanting, any delusion and ignorance that I may have acted upon the world and that I may have also received from the world in the form of hurt and pain and suffering. I forgive myself for being there, for being the recipient of these sufferings and ills. I give myself permission to let go of any animosity let go of any delusional thinking about the world the way it should be rather than the way it is and letting go of any excessive wanting the world to be the way it isn't I give myself permission to let go of this animosity and pain in my heart breathing in to the state of forgiveness making peace being kind and being very gentle with myself
in this state of divinity, in this Brahma Vihara, as we would say, this noble mansion, this divine place, this divine aboding, abiding, where I exist in a state of forgiveness towards myself and the whole world, overflowing the state of forgiveness towards all beings. Acknowledging and being accountable for any transgressions that I may have suffered or any transgressions I may have perpetuated myself, I forgive myself. I'm very sorry for what I have done. I wholeheartedly am sorry for the sufferings I have received. And I make an amends to myself through this act of forgiveness, this act of kindness, this act of compassion, this act of equanimity towards the way the world is and the way this, this aggregate of suffering that I call myself is. So as I as I approach the end of this meditation, maybe I can just reflect on the state of my heart. How do I feel? What is the tone? What is the ambience? What is the how would I describe this space in my heart of of forgiveness? Do I feel heavy or do I feel light? Does this space feel rough or smooth? Do I feel anxious or do I feel calm and peaceful? Do I feel the mind is pulling in one direction or another direction? Am I attracted towards things or am I repulsed by things? Do I feel calm and peaceful or am I centered? Does the mind feel scattered? Or does it feel solid? Do I feel at ease or dis-ease? What is the feeling of this space in my heart? I reflect with great kindness and care and compassion upon this nature of my own heart, not critical or judging, but accepting myself, warts and all. So when we experience pain and suffering in the world, when we come into relationship with other people, especially those ones who are dear to us, who are important in our lives, when we come in contact with those, with anybody, there can arise uh, an expectation in our heart that, that they behave in some way and that expectation is not met and a judgment arises. 
And when we're very young children, we can often feel that the world is acting cruelly t towards us because we are bad and we are wrong. And that we need to change our behavior so we can do things that are pleasing to others, our ability, because it's important for us to try to survive. We need the help and cooperation of others to survive. We need the care of others to survive. We need their attention. But as we get older, these same habits that have formed in childhood can be not helpful because the circumstances and conditions have changed. And as we grow older, we understand that maybe our own behavior was, was good enough. If we look at our behavior in terms of dana or generosity, we can see that we're generous people, that we actually do acts of kindness and generosity. And if we look into our morality, we can see that we're not doing any acts of harm against others. And not only that, we promote the welfare and the health of other beings as well as ourselves. We, we actively not just don't harm other beings, but we actively do things for the benefit and the welfare of other beings. When we look into our actions, we see that we, we ask for permission if we want something. We're not thieves. We don't take what is not given to us, what is not uh, what we don't have permission for. We, we, we actually find the skillful ways and means to have a livelihood where we earn our way in the world. So we have no necessity to take what is not given. In fact, we have fine moral behavior with regard to other people's property. And when we look into our physicality with other beings, we can see that we don't have any transgressions in our, in our sexual behavior, that we're trustworthy in body with other people, that we promote safe, physically safe spaces for other people, that we really care for other beings. We care for children and other people that may be in vulnerable situations and we act for the welfare, the physical welfare of other beings, for other people. And when we look into our speech, we can see that we go to great efforts to be truthful, to be factually correct, to not be divisive, to find kind and skillful speech so we go to great efforts to not just simply uh, not be a liar, not uh, be divisive, not speak harshly and not trash talk people. We really go to great efforts in this area. And we go to great efforts to be keep clear minded, not intoxicating and fooling and deluding our mind. So we lead a, a morally wholesome life and when we have the time and the opportunity we come to, we've tried to cultivate our minds, we've tried to cultivate a true, true knowledge and wisdom and education and training by being very skillful people in the world. And also when we have the time, practicing and cultivating and developing our mind through meditation, through listening to Dhamma talks, through uh, trying to acquire wisdom, not just straightforward intellect, and cultivating and developing wholesome, skillful ways and means of existing in this world. But nevertheless, we can feel at times judged and hurt, and we have a sense of shame arising, we have a sense of pain. People say things to us that are unskillful, though we are skillful, or sometimes we're just in a very difficult place.
and hurt arises and anger arises from that hurt or anxiety arises from that hurt. Fear arises from that hurt. All sorts of ways that we can be not self-caring. We can find it difficult to care for ourselves. So it's very, very helpful when these kind of wounds arise that we're able to open the wound to forgiveness, that we don't cover it over, that we don't push things under the carpet, we don't hide our pain and our difficulties from our own mind, from our own accountability. We need to know clearly where the hurt is and that I can open up this space, find a safe space for myself to open it just like I would go to a, a clinic if I had a, a wound or an infection. It would have to be opened to an antiseptic environment so that I can clean this wound and I can maybe have the sting of accountability in my life, that I am accountable for my actions and I can wholeheartedly forgive myself. I can really make a full apology to myself, sometimes for just being there, for existing, for, for being the victim of my own circumstances. And that I can make an amends to myself through forgiveness, where I can actually forgive myself. So forgiveness is a very different process to reconciliation. In the video we could see that uh, Mary and the man had forgiveness for each other. They had reconciliation for each other but even the man couldn't forgive himself still. So though he had reconciliation with the, the person who was a victim of his actions, he couldn't forgive himself. So forgiveness is something that we can do for ourselves. It's our own duty. We can only forgive ourselves, really. And sometimes reconciliation is a separate process. As you know, in South Africa, there was the Peace and Reconciliation Commission, which has now been copied in many, many parts of the world. But reconciliation has got nothing to do with forgiveness. Forgiveness we can own ourselves, and it's a process. And it can take a lot of work to forgive ourselves, to forgive others. So we don't need the other person to forgive us back. We don't need them to be there. We don't need them to exist even. They may be dead, they may be gone, but we can still forgive the, forgive the bodily sensations we may experience, the pain and suffering we may experience in different parts of our body. Forgive the sensations of like and dislike and also just the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions that may arise around hurt, around pain, around suffering. So this act of forgiveness is a great act of self-care. It's a very skillful thing to do in the face of difficult emotions. When the protective emotions arise like fear and anger, these are emotions that are arising, trying to protect us and trying to cope with any pain and difficulty that we may be experiencing. So these are the signs and these are the skillful ways and means when these emotions arise that we can transform the energy that are, uh, has arisen because of pain and hurt we can transform it through anger and fear 
into forgiveness. These protective emotions of fear and anger are arising to protect us and shame also to protect us. But when they arise, we need to transform them skillfully. And we can do this with the great help of forgiveness, which is another skill. It's a great skill to have and to cultivate and develop. And it can be the most difficult thing to forgive oneself, as you saw in that video. We can punish murderers, we can put them in jail for a very long time, but that doesn't mean that they are forgiven, uh, that they can forgive themselves. So this is the prison of karma, which is a very effective prison. You don't need to put people in iron bars. I've worked a lot with prisoners, and they can do a full term of prison and still be totally unforgiven in their own heart towards themselves for what they did. And we don't need to have committed any great crimes to be beyond forgiveness. All of us have, in every day, we may be unforgiving towards ourselves. So it can be very skillful for us to make the space in our heart to allow forgiveness in when we see difficulty arising in our heart. It could be towards just the natural process of aging where we feel angry towards ourselves. We may feel angry towards ourselves for all kinds of reasons. We may feel hurt towards ourselves for all kinds of reasons. We may feel sadness. We may feel all of these protective emotions. But transforming them skillfully into something that is divine where the error of being human is transformed into divinity, the divine nature of the Brahma Viharas, this mechanism that we have of forgiveness is a very useful skill to have. And there's three very important parts to it. I account for what I have done wrong. I know, what I've, I know where the hurt is. I can name it. I know where it is. I can identify it clearly. It's accountable. I apologize wholeheartedly. And I make an amends. So it's a triple A grade process of forgiveness. Accountability. I apologize. I make an amends. And an amends, especially towards the self, is very tricky and difficult. Because an amends is what any eight-year-old will tell you. An amends is where you make it up to the person that you have victimized. You make it up. And that's what the victim would consider to be an amends. It's not what the victor thinks the victim deserves. It's a wholehearted generous act that the victim feels is adequate recompense. And this can be very difficult to do for oneself when we've been victimizing ourselves, when we've been practicing critical speech towards ourselves, when we've been very hard on ourselves, when we've been perfectionistic on ourselves when we've been demanding on ourselves to turn around and make an amends through kindness, through generosity, through taking a generous view on our actions, especially if we hold ourselves up to these external standards of sila, where we find that we, we haven't really transgressed our sila, and we need to be generous with ourselves around that not punishing, and where we can act, use these acts of mental culture, like states of forgiveness, like metta, like doing things that are wholesome and nutritious for our own mind, 
So this is very, very useful. So I wanted to maybe bring up this topic again today because I wanted to show you a second way into forgiveness. The last time we did this about two weeks ago, uh, I wanted to show you the power of how we can transform sadness. I hope today you found the video clip quite inspiring. It's a different energy from this kind of video clip. So there's many, many skillful ways that we can start to access forgiveness in ourselves. And so it's very useful if you, for you to have different tools. So find your own skillful ways and means into a state of forgiveness. If, sa if, if uh, sadness isn't a way for you, because sometimes we need to grieve our, our hurt and our sufferings, Today, I hope you could find it very inspiring where you can see, see other parties forgiving each other. You know, so this is, uh, this is something very useful. It's, I always think of it as like the culture of a yogurt or for a tofu where you, you take the old yogurt from yesterday and you use it to grow the new yogurt from today's fresh milk. You know, we need the culture. We need the seed sometimes to help us to forgive it's not okay to just go around saying oh sorry sorry we can't say that to ourselves it has to be really from the heart and sometimes we really need to inspire our mind to move into these difficult states and transform but it's incredibly powerful as a way and a means of letting go of suffering and this is the key, one of the key factors I find in this path of Buddhism. It's a path that moves us from suffering to less suffering. It's a Visuddhi Magga, a path of purification of the mind, a path that is removing the thorns of suffering from our life. And I hope that you can see that that has a trajectory that moves towards complete freedom from suffering. And this requires great activity in your mind, great skillfulness to identify or find accountability of what suffering is, know it in our heart, apologize to ourselves for that suffering existing and find the amends, the skillful transformation towards that suffering.